Hi, I'm James. And I'm Teresa. And this is the Creating Normal podcast, a podcast on living a creative life beyond mental illness. Where we share our successes and our struggles in life and in art. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Creating Normal. I'm Teresa Cologne, and with me today is James Prescott. Hello, James. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode. <laughs> welcome. If you're a returning listener, we are just so thrilled to have you back with us. And if you are new, we welcome you, and we hope you enjoy what you hear today. So, as we always do, shall we just dive in? And, James, how was your week this week? Yeah, my week. Um, yeah, this is the bit where we talk about how we are. Remember, to tell us how you are as well. This week has been a lot better than my last week. I can't tell you exactly what it was because I don't really know. It, it, uh, I think a lot of things that are bottled up got heard and and that was really healthy, getting that stuff out, being heard. So I started to deal with mental health stuff a lot better, which is... Uh, in a much more positive place mm-hmm. did a bit of a my sister did a bit of a clear out of my flat with me um and so that's been really really healthy and you know because decluttering is always really healthy yes um i've done a, i've done a bit of writing been inspired really by some stuff that i've heard which i'll share later because that'll be in my little tip my recommendation i have a healthier perspective on things i think oh, good. the uh is the the key to that. I saw my spiritual director as well, which is always good, always healthy. So, yeah. And how about you? I've had, I think, an awesome week. I think that's the kind of week I've had. (laughs) I've had a lot of really great things happen. So the book, we finalized the cover. We've resolved all, basically, the book is almost ready. They're just doing, finalizing one or two more details, and then it gets to go up on pre-sales probably this week, and we've set a launch date of May 15th. So that, for me, is super exciting. I may even get to have the author preview copy, which is where you make sure that the print run matches what you think you've uploaded into the system. I could be holding that in my hands, you know, as early as next week, which um, I have a feeling I'll cry when that happens because this is all super exciting. And I I also got reminded this week of a couple of different things. So I got reminded this week that everything I'm doing with Wounded Birds Ministry is, it's not about getting a name on a book. That's an outcome and that's a benefit. But we had somebody in the Facebook group who really just had this massive, massive breakthrough. And just to have witnessed that was just so rewarding for me. And it just reminded me of like what this is all about and why why this is so important to me. And that has really helped me because I've been just, the website is still not done. I'm hoping I'm going to have the new website launched by the end of this week. But, you know, sometimes you need to be reminded of why you're doing, you're putting yourself through all this pain and trouble. And I kind of feel like that's where I'm at. Yeah, I think that's really, really good to have that reminder, isn't it? I mean, I had that. Yeah, that's what I had this week. But in a different, in a different way for, yeah. But why, why, why do we do what we do? You know, it's, are we doing it simply for fame and money and popularity and followers and subscribers? Or are we actually doing it because we have something valuable that we think is worth sharing yes. with people? You know, that's, if it resonates with a lot of people, that's, that's, that's good. Uh, it's a nice thing to happen and we should celebrate that. But um, ultimately, it's about really creating what's true for you. Um, and so... Uh, I think that's that's really, really important. Yeah, yeah. And I think that actually dovetails into our topic for this week, which is rejection. And I'll tell you, you know, a lot of times when I'm facing rejection, it hurts more when I – it. one of the things it does to me is it pushes me away from the why of why I'm doing everything. And I think that might be one of the reasons why it is painful for me when I feel rejected because there's something that's so important to me. If I get a no on something, it feels like – uh, they're not just rejecting me; they're rejecting the me- they're like they're they're rejecting the best parts of me or the what I have to offer the world, and that feels very diminishing. Yeah, I think there's so many contexts for rejection. I think, like for me, when if it's about, I mean, I had a book proposal rejected this year. That was not easy. 
you know but what what i had to remember is they weren't rejecting me as a person you know like when you have a failure and which can feel like a rejection you know when people when you launch something and people don't want it people you feel rejected you feel like you're not wanted or what you're making is not wanted you know and we can tie our identity too much mm. to our work yes so that if we go it's like i had lots of job interviews last year and i had about i think about 11 in a row where i came second you know and every time it feels like more and more of a rejection yeah and it feels like they're rejecting you not just your work you know it's uh and that's and that's hard that's really really hard and uh, we all have to face rejection you know Sometimes people are rejecting us, uh, depending on what the context is, you know. But if it's if it's to do with our work, then they aren't actually rejecting us, and we're just putting, we just trans, we're just transferring our identity onto our work, so that when people reject our work, they are we make it about us rather than just about the work. Hmm. Um, and there may be a, there may be a legitimate reason why they've rejected the work. It may be it may not be that it's bad. It may be that it's just wrong for what they want to do it may not fit with their their vision it may not fit with what their company does it may not fit with what they're doing it's not that it's bad ultimately we need to avoid tying our security and identity and our value to the success of our work because it it, you know we are it all begin the great creative work and a great life actually um begins with recognizing that you are enough yes as you are without anything else if you did nothing in your life if you did no work if you did nothing achieve nothing you would still be infinitely valuable and work and yeah and what and have infinite value and worth yes as you are yes but, you know a parent doesn't love a baby because of what they've done a parent loves their baby because they exist yes and that's how I mean, I know not everyone here who listens is a Christian, but the principle is the same whether you're a Christian or not. We all have infinite value and worth because we exist. Yes. And that's where our security should come from. And Brené Brown talks about this a lot when she talks about vulnerability and um, that, and gifts of imperfection. That's mm-hmm. the book. Um, and that, you know, that you're enough. You don't have to prove yourself. And when you accept that, it frees you to create a great life it's easy to be authentic in your life without fear. It's free to be you. You know, and obviously the same, is, the same is true with your creative work. But the reality is we all have to face rejection. And, you know, sometimes people, like if, if we're in a relationship that doesn't work or if we're, or if we lose our job or if, if or, you know, or, or someone betrays us or someone hurts us. Right. Um, someone abandons us. Then, you know, I'm, well, you hold on. Them, I'm going to slow. Uh, if somebody abandons or betrays us, that's not necessarily them rejecting us. A lot well, of no. times, okay, that's yes. their own issues. And and I think that that's actually one of the challenges with rejection is that we can look at someone else's actions and we assume that they're about us, and so we personalize something that is not personal. I agree. I agree completely on all of that. Um, that's what I was going to go on to say. Sorry, oh, sorry. I, been, I interrupted you. I know, no, no, I know I've been talking a lot. Um, <laughs> I guess I have a lot to say on this subject. Yeah, when someone rejects you like that, they are not rejecting you. It's their issue. Um, that's one way to deal with rejection is to remember that a lot of rejection is about the other person, not about you. Well, I think that the other side of that too is that when we have when we have a healthy perspective on rejection, I think it actually becomes very freeing for us because sometimes, especially as creatives, we like to throw a lot of things out there. Uh, I've heard people, th- you know, call it like throwing spaghetti at the wall because you get excited about all these different ideas. And I've heard people like, especially other writers, and they're like, well, I'm trying something new and it, the audience doesn't seem to be responding to it. And I, but I want to do this and I want to do that and I want to do this other thing. And what, what I have found is that, because I've done all of that. I mean, like this podcast is, you know, one of those things. I wanted to do a podcast forever and here I am doing this podcast, right? 
And I'm going to keep doing this podcast, even if downloads don't happen, even if we never get subscribers, I'm going to keep doing this for as long as it's fun, because this isn't about building a brand or anything like that. On the other hand, you know, I've had other things that haven't worked and thank God they haven't because that has allowed me to narrow my focus. So sometimes that rejection, it's just, it's, it's almost uh, like when you're at an airport and you see the guys with like the little orange, you know, cone light things and they're going, and then they're directing you and they're going ding, ding, left, left, right, right, back, back, stop, you're there. You know, to me, I think that sometimes when doors close or people say no to us, that that is an opportunity to kind of to take a step back and reevaluate, you know, against our why, since we were talking about our why earlier and say, how important is this to that why and to accomplishing what I'm trying to accomplish? And does it meet those goals? And that I think puts us back in a position where we can start to think about uh, the priority and if we want to retool and reattempt or if we want to drop and redirect altogether. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it is, it's, yeah, that's right. I mean, it can be so freeing when you have a healthy perspective on rejection, um, because you can release yourself of the burden of it being your fault. Yes. Because it probably wasn't your fault. And people can, you know, and someone, some people might argue, well, sometimes you need to take legitimate criticism and and uh, maybe someone rejected you for a reason and there's something that you need to examine about yourself. Um, I understand that argument, but I think we need to have people... I think that's not the job of people who criticise us to tell the truth about us. I think it's important that we have people that we trust, people that are invested in us, people that care about us, people that know us, people that we've given permission to tell us the absolute truth. So if there's something that we need to work on, something we need, somewhere we need to grow, uh, something we need to be challenged on it's them that do it not the people that reject us so just like let go of the stuff that people say who reject you just let it go and if you've got a concern about it ask one of these people that you trust and say this person said this are they right you know and then this per then the person that cares about you and is invested in your well-being will tell you the truth and if it was if what they said had some truth if there was if there was a legitimate issue, then your friends who really care about you will tell you. And if there wasn't, they'll tell you that too. This is why it's so important to have a team. Yes. Um, have a, your people who you know. And this is like literally about four or five people who you know you trust to tell you the truth at all times. So they'll tell you if you're being an asshole, if you're, even if you're wildly successful. And they'll tell you that you're not a loser when you have a failure you know that's one reason why i love therapists you know because when you're talking about a team you know i think about my friend groups i think about my church group and i think about my medical team that i have around me and it was one of the first times i've ever built a team around myself was when i got my diagnosis but that's when i put in place a psychiatrist that's when i put in place a therapist that's when i put in some um, a spiritual person i could turn to with my questions about mental illness and how they relate specifically to my faith but I, you know it was the first time in my life where i was like oh my gosh i have a team of people around me and their job is to help me and i love that's one of the things i love about having you know having these people is is our friends sometimes i think struggle with being honest because of whatever garbage they have in their backgrounds and finding somebody who can be candid and honest and gentle at the same time is you know that's a a very special combination of gifts and some people really struggle with that and it's why i think to your point it's so important that we have a lot of people around us because where one person may be unwilling or uncomfortable sharing one detail another person will and and i think a therapist is a good person to go to once you've collected all those little pieces of information to kind of help you sort your way through it put it all together and then mine for the gems hidden in there there's change there's pain there's hope there's something in all that feedback that you can either take and use or that you can use as a comfort for yourself and and I love having therapists for that because I can be a hot mess with them and I'm paying them for it so I don't have to feel any kind of guilt or shame over that which is one thing that sometimes does prevent me from reaching out to my friend groups and and other trusted advisors 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I can I concur completely with that. I have a spiritual director um, who is also trained as a uh, therapist as well. They're a qualified therapist, um, and they're one of my people. Yeah. You know, I mean, they are. Um, um, everything I run by them, and they will tell me the truth. They'll reflect it back. They'll reflect stuff back at me. They'll t try and help me discover it for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and and been invaluable to my growth in the last two years. Absolutely invaluable. Um, and then I have close friends as well, and I know who they are. Mm -hmm. I hope they know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who I just go to and will tell me the truth. You know that I'm really grateful for that. You yeah. know it's. It means that I don't have to worry about what anyone else thinks. I can just say, okay, if this person is concerned, then there's prob then there might be a problem. Yes. You know, yeah, a whole bunch of other people are concerned. I'm not actually going to be worried. I will just ask somebody that I trust whether that's an issue, you know. Mm -hmm. And then if it isn't, I can let it go, you yes. know. And that's, that's, uh, that's it. Yeah. And this kind of ties into criticism as well, in a way there's a lot of links between criticism and rejection, you know, Yes. because um, we can take criticism as a rejection of us. We'll do criticism in another episode, actually, I think, but, but cause that's a whole topic on its own. Certainly learning to deal with criticism better as, has, has been a byproduct of help and learn to deal with rejection better as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think one other thing, James, on the topic of rejection is that I think one reason why rejection stings is because it touches on a sensitive part of ourselves. Even in situations that may feel unrelated or uh, where it may not make sense to you why you're responding or why you feel so strongly rejected, I think that sometimes even even in mild, I don't know how to, this is an audio podcast, so nobody can see me making air quotes here, but you know, I think that uh, rejection falls on a spectrum in terms of how sensitively we feel it. And I think that some person may be trying to do a gentle letdown of us, but because of whatever it is hits a trigger, which we've talked about in a prior podcast as well, you know, it hits a trigger, then that really touches something and we feel rejection, we feel shame, even though there's nothing to actually feel guilt or shame over or rejection over in this particular situation and so i i think that's one reason why being sensitive to your triggers is also important yes i oh, know it's all tied together isn't it i mean it is <laughs> um it is everything everything is connected but i think that the key is when when rejection taps into something like that one of your triggers again that's not about the rejection itself that's about something bigger something mm -hmm. deeper mm -hmm. you know that the podcast I'm going to recommend later, uh, the guy I'm going to mention later said that a couple of years ago they'd gone through this thing where uh, this big grief or whatever, and they were the way that it wasn't such a big grief that, but they were the way they were reacting to it was too much for the level of loss. Yes. And so they thought, okay, there's clearly something deeper going on here than just this. This is just this has just kind of opened a doorway for some deeper stuff to come out. And often that's what can happen yes. with rejection. You know, I think the key to rejection is to not, well, you can't avoid it, but learn how to, again, it's the same thing, learn how to respond to it in a healthy way and to actually use it to help you grow. Learn from it, you know. Nothing is wasted. Yeah. You know, it, I think that's, that's a really love, that's a really great phrase. I don't know who said that, but nothing is wasted it's often it's often the kind of the negative stuff which ultimately helps us grow more than the, the positive stuff well i think you're right i think that's why it is important to be working through our triggers because when we work through our triggers when we work through those emotions and when we claim our story then we are able to be more resilient and we're able to put those rejections or those letdowns you know, those disappointments, we're able to put those back in context, put them back in perspective. And I think that is where it starts to become, 
you know, where we are then are in a position where we can learn from it. We can say, okay, well, maybe this time it didn't work out, but next time I could try this. Whereas, you know, if I'm in the middle of a depression and, you know, I have even a minor setback, man, that sets off all the automatic tapes in my head telling me what a failure I am, what a loser I am, how I'll never get this. I never have gotten this. What an idiot I was to think, you know, would they even make the attempt to begin in the first place and all that other stuff. You know, it's only through working through all that emotional garbage that you get to a place where, you know, you can have a, you can trip, you know, mentally trip over something and then go, okay, that really wasn't that bad. And, and let me put this back into perspective. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, for people listening, do you share with us your experiences of rejection and what you, maybe what you learned from them? And positive maybe, and um, negative. Positive and negative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's a fa- we have a Facebook group, Creating Normal. We have, a, we have Twitter, which is cre- at Creating Normal. You know, just let us get in touch with us. Share us, just share your stories. Tell us because it's important we do this in community. You know, that's what this is all about. Yes. Because uh, I guarantee whatever you've experienced, you're probably not alone. At the root core of it, somebody else has probably experienced something very, very, very similar. And part of the reason that we do this podcast is to let people know they're not alone. So do share. I think that is probably the best way that we could possibly wrap up that segment on James. So I'm not going to say another word. Instead, I'm going to ask you, what is your tip or recommendation for the week? Well, my recommendation of the week is again on my favorite podcast, apart from my two, <laughs> the Robcast, Rob Bell's podcast. The week that we're the, day, the week that we're recording this, Josh Radner was the guest. Um, some of you may know Josh Radner because he was in. Um, a little TV show called How I Met Your Mother. He's one of the main cast members. It's, that's a long time ago now. And I tell you, this guy, he's a very deeply spiritual guy. He's got a lot of wisdom and insight. Um, we're sharing a lot of quotes that he's got. He's gone over the years about identity and spirituality and our personal journey. And we hear a lot about him as well and his own journey. And it's very powerful. And... He's now, I think he's acting in another show in America called Rise, but he's also making music. This guy completely kind of happened out of the blue, was not planned, met a friend, and they just started making music together. And um, I've listened to some of it. It's amazing. The band is called Radner and Lee, Mm -hmm. and they are on Spotify and iTunes and everywhere amazing music it's a very deeply soulful music it's kind of acoustic kind of stuff the lyrics are just amazing and so deep um really connected with me this podcast this music it's kind of really inspired me to be true to myself Mm -hmm. and be true to my authentic voice and really just be just create what i want to create and not worry about the outcome because that's basically what josh is doing you know he's I read articles, I've read articles kind of like what happened to him, you know, he was this famous guy and now he's doing, you know, and they're kind of almost kind of mocking him, but he's being really authentic and creating some really great stuff and he's got a great story and he's, yeah, really inspiring. So the Robcast with Josh Radner and Radner and Lee on Spotify or iTunes, wherever you get your music, check all those out. I think they're on YouTube as well. So um, yeah, definitely recommend that. Well, we'll definitely have a link to that in the podcast show notes up on the creatingnormalpodcast.com. Yeah. So my recommendation for this week is to keep a Y box or a joy file or something along those lines. Every time you get a response from somebody that makes you feel good in relating to what you do, pop it in there. So I actually take screenshots every so often. It's like this conversation I had with my, my, with the person in the group where they told me about all the breakthroughs that they were having. I took a screenshot on that and I put it in a special album on my iPhone. I put it in there and then I went back through and I started looking at some of the other items that were in there. It re-inspired me. As we were talking about at the beginning of the show, you know, sometimes it can be really hold on, hard to hold on to that inspiration and why you're doing things in the first place. Uh, to me, this is doing a favor for um, future Teresa is taking these screenshots and putting them away so that future Teresa, when future Teresa gets frustrated, disappointed, and a little bit burnt out, 
can say, thank you, Past Teresa, for taking good care of me. And they can go back through, and future Teresa can go back through and look at all that stuff and remember why, why I am doing this in the first place. So that, that's my tip of the week. Awesome. Love that. Absolutely love that. Fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for, for listening today. Remember, you can catch all the old episodes, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you get, wherever you get podcasts. You know, so catch up. We've had some great topics so far. I've got some yes. more coming up. And so until next week. Create courageously. And love yourself fiercely. Take care, everyone. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Creating Normal podcast. You can find links and show notes to everything we've discussed today on our website at creatingnormalpodcast.com. We invite you to continue the conversation in our Facebook group, which you can find at Creating Normal Community. You can follow James on Twitter and Instagram at jamesprescott77. And you can follow Teresa on Twitter and Instagram at Teresa M. Cologne. Thanks for listening.